Alrighty, I want to thank everyone for uh, for joining today. Uh, my name is Matt Stowicki, and I am the sales director for the uh, K-12 and community college divisions of NewsBank. Today, we're going to look at uh, Access World News. We'll uh, walk through this. I'll show you all the different ways that you can get to this valuable content and use it. Uh, additionally, we will look at the uh, lesson plans that are available in the system and the hot topics, which are a couple of things that will help you, especially in today's uh, online learning environment. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, reach out, um, send them to me, and uh, we'll try and answer them right away for you, okay? So um, this is the landing page that you would see when you go to Access World News. Uh, the resource is made up of um, 12,000 sources from around the world, 196 different countries. It supports all subject areas. The data is available in full text. Uh, we have multiple source types available, uh, multiple languages available. Um, and we'll look at the way we can use that data, again, to help support all the different subject areas that are found. Um, when you get into the system, this front landing page, you'll see there's a Google-like search bar right here in the center of the page. You simply type in a search term, uh, hit the search button, and the system will go out and it will search through, again, that... Uh, you know, 12,000 plus sources that are available and return a set of results. Uh, now, in this case, we did fake news and we're getting uh, almost 400,000 results back. The data itself is sorted by newest first. So you'll know, uh, note right here that here I've got a magazine, and I can tell that by the icon, uh, dated May 1st. Uh, we get data in advance. One of the source types we have is magazines. And when the magazine is done with a specific story, they will uh, get it to us in advance. So you actually get data in advance of the print copies of many of these magazines. I can sort my data to best match, which will use an algorithm of where does a search term appear in the title of the article, first paragraph, and so on. Uh, or we can go to the oldest. I've got the option now to filter my data with all of these different filters that are found on the left-hand side of the page. The first of these filters is a date selector. You'll note it has a slide bar. So if I wanted to filter my date uh, of the results down to, for example, just to 2000 and forward, I can use my slide bar and simply slide it across to 2000, hit apply, and that will filter the older data out and give me only the results from 2000 forward. When you do that, you'll note how the slide bar changes and you can actually see how the term fake news increased dramatically um, in 2010 to 2019. Now, if you wanted to break it down just to that decade, I could click on that and apply that so I could see how, for example, by doing that, uh, the term fake news uh, trended year by year during that time period. And as you can see, the beginning of that decade in 2010, it wasn't overly used. However, once we hit 2016, the use of that term increased dramatically. So it's a great way to show students how uh, specific topics and terms and things of that nature trend over time. I can actually search by specific dates. You'll see here that I can search by a specific day, month, year, a range of days, and so on. So here's all the different formats you can actually search by uh, using the date filter. I can filter by source type. Now, remember I mentioned we had multiple source types. So we've got available audios, professional blogs, college and university newspapers, journals, magazines, newspapers, uh, newsletters, news wires, transcripts, video, and web-only sources. You'll note the icons that indicate the type of data that we're looking at. Students get used to seeing those icons so they can see that this is indeed a newspaper versus um, 
you know, this one being a magazine and so on, okay? Um, you'll note again too, the web only sources happens to be the second uh, largest collection of rele uh, relevant results in this case. Uh, many publishers have gone away from printing information uh, daily and they now um, put data on the web. It's not that they've stopped collecting data, it's just they stopped printing it and they now make it available on the web. Uh, Newsbank has gone out uh, to most of their publishers that we work with to get all the data they have. So we'll get web only data, we'll get their newspapers, we'll get their professional blogs and so on. To filter down to any one of these, you just simply click and it would filter down just to that source type. Here I can filter just to a specific year. I can go to a specific source name if I wish, a specific location. Now you'll note that all the filters that I clicked on have this more options button. When you click that, that will open up a box and show you all the different options you have available. Now, as I mentioned, uh, Access World News is made up of uh, 12,000 sources from around the world, 196 different countries. So I can sort my data by continent, country, region, state, provenance, all the way down to a city. So example here is if I wanted to sort my data and filter my data down to only New York, what I'll do is I'll switch to state, I'll scroll down to New York, put a checkbox in my box there, hit apply, and now I've taken my results set and narrowed it down just to the 9,571 sources I have in New York for the time frame 2010 to 2019. If I wanted to remove one of these filters, I can simply click on the X and remove that. And now what I've done by doing that is I've still kept my New York filter, but now I have no date filter. So I'm getting all the results from the state of New York. You'll note here, now that I filtered it to New York, I've got cities available. So we could go to just Albany and get the information from just Albany by simply clicking on that. So now I've got all the information from Albany, okay? And it's narrowed down to my information from Albany. And you'll note here the different look in these snippets. This is a full text article from the Times Union while this is an image from the Times Union of the paper when it was delivered March 23rd. And I'll get into uh, the difference between the uh, image edition, which is a part of the integrated collection for the Times Union, and the full text information. I can Lexile by reading level. So here's all the different reading levels we have. And you can simply click on any one or again, click on more options, and if I wanted to narrow my information down to ninth and 10th grade, I can click in those two boxes, hit apply, and that will filter my information down just to um, those two reading levels. And you'll see here, so now I'm down to 193 results. The last of the filters that are available is language. As I mentioned, we have multiple languages available. And I'm going to come back and show you all the different languages uh, later in this presentation. We've got errors in history, uh, which are available because we're searching historical and current data together. And then we've got our presidential errors, which again would narrow it down just to that time frame. Once you've filtered your data down um, to the uh, information you want, now I can actually look because I've got 193 results, what is it I'm really looking for and do I have it here? I can roll over the title of the article and that will give me an article preview so I can start reading it from the beginning. Is that what I'm really looking for or not? If it's not, I can simply close it and move on to the next result. You'll also note we've got a preview button so I can click on that and I can see, is this the information I want? If it is, I can simply click view document and it will open up. And you can also view the document by clicking on the title in the results set. Once you open up a document, 
you'll note it's nice and clean, very, very easy and readable. The search term is always highlighted in yellow. And across the top again, via icons, we've got a set of tools, actions that the user can take. So they can make the text larger, create a citation. You'll note we've got all the different citations available. So there would be the MLA8 citation. If I wanted to view another format, I can simply do that. And if you work with Noodle Tools, RefWorks, or EasyBib, the system will automatically export the information to those bibliography tools. So here, by clicking Noodle Tools, I was able to export the MLA8 citation to Noodle Tools. And if I had this uh, program open, I would down here have the option to select the uh, uh, project that I need to put this citation into. I can email the information. There's a to, a from, email address, and a random message. Now, when you email this information to someone, the recipient will get this in their inbox and open it up, and it will look just like this. The system is user friendly, is um, not just user friendly, but uh, mobile friendly. So it does resize itself according to the device that you're using. So it will resize itself to a phone, to a tablet, to a laptop, and so on. And they'll have all these options available. I can print. And when I print, you've got the option to include the citation. I can download the information. Now I can download the information to a PDF or I can save it out to my Google Drive. If I select Google, again, I can include the citation and hit save. And what it will do is it will go out and ask me what Google Drive, what Google account I want to push it to. So I select my Google account, allow it to push that information out, and it sent that out to my Google Drive where I can then click on it and you'll note here, okay, here's the article we just pushed out and I can actually manage my other information and view them from here. This will save the information to an internal folder uh, on Newsbank. And then this is the actual link. These are Dora links. So this link, um, when clicked, will automatically open up to this specific article. Um, teacher can take and use this link in Google Classroom, put it up on their whiteboard, click on it, it would open up as long as they're authenticated. They could send it to uh, their students, for example, and say, we want you to read this article and do a one-page essay. A student would click on it, it would automatically open up to this if they're authenticated. If not, they'll, it'll request their username and password to get to it. And then last but not least, we've got a read-along with this. So I'll make that a little smaller, and by clicking the read along, that will actually open up and read right along with Chris us. Brodsky. These ideas will also become casualties of the pandemic. Okay, so that's our read along. From here, of course, I've got the option to go back to my results. I can go to the previous result. I can go to the next result simply by clicking these. Okay. I'll hit Newsbank, and that will bring me back to my main search screen. So that's actually how easy it really is to do a keyword search within Newsbank. Now, another way of getting to information is using the suggested topics. Uh, what Newsbank has done is we've tried to look at what are the biggest subject areas being used in schools today. Um, and here are the 15 largest subject areas we see being searched. And from here, a student, for example, if they're um, doing a project for science, they can simply click on the science topic, and you'll note this highlights and opens up all the different topic areas uh, found in science. And these are all different topics we see our users searching, or topics that our users have told us they wanted information on. If, for example, you're looking for something in science, and you don't see it, if you let us know what that topic is, we'll get that into the hands of our editorial team, which is made up of library science people, 
uh, ex-school teachers like myself, and they will in turn create that search and add it to this topic area. So example here is um, maybe I want to look at robotics. That seems to be a big thing these days. So if I click on that topic, what the system's going to do is it's going to go, it's going to take and open up that search string that our editorial team has created and run that search and bring back a set of relevant results. So as you can see here from the search box, this is more than what you would see the typical student type in. If he was doing a project on robotics, he'd probably type in robot, robotics and hope that he gets or she gets a good set of results. Probably could come back with a million results if I did that. However, here you can see we've created a search string here looking to narrow down by robotics where the information needs to find be found in the headline first. And then we're going to link it to information found in the full text. And we're going to narrow it down to um, results with 500 words or more. So it makes it very, very easy to do. Okay. Um, you can modify this result very, very easy. Add information to it. So by clicking here, I can add another field and then rerun the search. Okay. I can modify any of the fields that are here. When I scroll down, you'll see I'm down to just 15,800 results. And I now have my filters that I can apply. So I can filter my information any way I need, okay, to get to more information. Once I get to, um, to this result set, again, I've got the filters that I can apply. And I've got the same rules here where I can just roll over and um, get a article preview. Okay, go into that article and so on. Now, if I were to do an article preview, for example, of multiple um, uh, results and I want to keep those results, what I can also do from here is I can put a checkbox, as you can see, in these results. So if I were to take these three, and now you'll note how these same tools that we saw when we viewed the results article gives me this option to create or save all three of these. So I could literally print all three of these articles at once or email all three of the articles at once or create a citation, for example, of all three of these articles at once. So it gives you a chance to do things either one at a time or selecting multiple results at once. Okay. If I go back to click News Bank, that brings me back to the home screen here. And you'll note all of these are exactly the same. They all work the same way where they will open up a full set of topics that you can then click on and search. One of the other things now that um, you have available are what we call the uh, integrated collections. Again, a set of tools across the top here for the user. So here I can click search and this would allow me to search this page or search the issue for information. Okay. That gives me information on the Times Union page one. Again, I can create the citation. So there's our MLA8 citation. I can email this page to someone to, from, message, and send. Okay. I can clip information. So this one comes in very handy. Uh, maybe one of your students or teachers or the school was in the paper and you want to clip the article out and share it with the administration, you could do so. So example would be if I hit clip and for example, maybe I want to clip out this caption here, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a bit smaller for myself so I can see more of the information, okay? And I'm gonna move my clip right here so that I can capture this photo, okay? 
and I have the option. I can save it to Google Drive again, print it, or download it to a PDF, which is what I'll do first. And I'll include the MLA 8 citation. So when I hit download, what this does is this will now down create a PDF, clip this off of the page, download it to my hard drive. So now I can save this for use later. And you'll see here, make it a bit smaller so we can see it. We've got a nice, clean PDF of that caption. Okay, and there's my citation underneath of that. So very, very usable um, and lends itself to research uh, greatly uh, and just really highlighting current events, things that are happening out there in the world. Okay, we'll make that a little bit larger again. Again, I can print, I can download. Um, this is that saved to my internal folder. And here is the link to this page. Again, it will uh, bring me right to this page. And then I have three different options on how I can peruse the newspaper. I can simply forward one page at a time. That will bring me to the next page. Now I have a previous or next page. I can use the pull down and example is in this case I could jump to section B page one so that would allow me to jump to in this case the sports section I can also use my thumbnails here and scroll down through for example and maybe I want to go to page C1 right I can do that and click on page C1 via the thumbnails and that'll bring me to that page okay so here I'm in the capital region section so very easy to um, to use this version um, this is just like the uh, interface that you have with your historical newspaper package next thing I want to show you is actually right here under the quick links some very very important information here uh, especially in today's um, online learning environment uh, to help enrich and support information that has already been taught or even new information that needs to be taught. First of these is our hot topics. So the hot topics is really what are the latest issues and things that have been happening globally around the world um, over the last 30 days or so. So this is the April 2020 version. So this really tells us what's been happening out there in March. Here, as you can see, I've got an archive. So I could go back to March 18 to see what were those hot topics back in March of 2018. The hot topics are organized by subject area. So here I've got current events, business economics, civics, government, politics, social issues, science, technology, sports, arts and literature, and people. Simply click into any one of these, and it will show you the hot topics for civics, government, and politics in this case. So here we've got comparisons of the Spanish flu to uh, the coronavirus, of course, the government's response, Defense uh, Production, uh, Production Act, and so on, okay? With any of these, if you wanted more information, so it gives you a summary of what this little hot topic was and if you want more information on it you'll note here you can search for more information simply by clicking that link and that will go out and use that search term to search out more information on that specific topic so it's a great way to uh, support current events um, and all the different subject areas so what are the big things that happened in politics makes it very, very easy for students to get to information this way. If I click back to search, I also have daily headlines and lesson plans. If I click on that, what that will do is every day, um, from all the various sources that we have from around the world, uh, we have an algorithm that goes out and it looks at what are the big headlines that are happening uh, from around the world. And we're grabbing information from all different sources. As you can see, this is from Beirut, Lebanon, right? Okay. Um, here we've got from Tehran, Iran. All right. We've got um, from London, England, from the Washington Times. 
So we're grabbing information from all different sources, but these are the big topics that seem to be continuing to repeat themselves over and over again. So we pull them out. You can click on any one of these and you'll see it'll open up that article. Bring me to that information. I've got my icons across the top for the actions that I may want to take. I've got this search string that has been created to get more information on this specific subject area. And I've got a nice clean article. Okay. If I go back to my headlines, you will note though that one headline, always that top headline, has a lesson plan available. So if I go into this headline, it looks just like all the others with the exception of the button with the headline. So this is talking about the Great Barrier Reef. If I click on the lesson plan, you'll note here that here we built a lesson plan around the ecosystem and the coral reefs. So here's our topic, curricular, and subject areas. I can click this link to get back to the original article that was used to create this lesson plan. I've got my educational standards. And then I get into the actual lesson plan where I've got four sets of activities that the student would need to complete and do more research on in order to answer those questions being posed to promote critical thinking, compare and contrast, and so on. I can click here to run a search and find related articles, and that's linking out to um, Access World News. I'll come back to that while that's searching. I've got additional resources. So here are some uh, areas you might want to go look. Um, graphic organizers, additional websites. Okay, here is the search results that was used to get more information on this. Again, more filters that I could apply to get and narrow down the information based on, of course, the questions I was asked to answer. Okay, and then we give you presentation and assessment options. Um, these can be used by the teachers and so on. You'll note they can increase the text. They can email this lesson plan, print it, or download it to their Google Drive. Uh, they're very, very usable, uh, can be modified any way you wish. The nice part about this is since NewsBank has been doing this for so long, if you were to click on View All Lesson Plans, you'll see here that we have 4,700 and 71 lesson plans available. So we've got lesson plans on pretty much any subject area you want to get into. You can sort them by the curricular areas, uh, but really the easier way to find information would be simply start typing in a term. So example is maybe I want information, a lesson plan on the coronavirus. So I just started typing COR and you'll see here Here's a lesson plan on the impact of COVID-19, okay? Here's a lesson plan on COVID-19, the world's newest uh, coronavirus, okay? Another one here stemming from China, okay? Um, maybe your economics teacher needs to find help for teaching financial literacy, FIN. There's financial literacy. So as you can see, very easy to find information and lesson plans on various topics and subject areas, okay? They're all designed exactly the same and are very, very easy to use. I really appreciate everybody's time. Um, please uh, stay safe out there. Again, if you need anything from me, please reach out. Have a great day now. Thank you.